Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here with us on a rainy and chilly Monday afternoon. Uh, we're going to talk about COVID mostly today, but of course, we'll take your questions on any subject. Uh, I'm going to give you a few numbers, and then Dr. Eccles is here today, so he'll expand on uh, what seems to be going on, and uh, then he'll take your questions. I'll take your questions as well. So beginning with COVID, you um, couldn't have turned on the TV or listened to the radio over the weekend without hearing that the COVID numbers are going up really across the country and uh, in our area as well. Um, this is something that we started talking about last week. I think it was last Monday. We first began seeing some upticks in our po number of positive cases in the city. The city's numbers still look decent, but they definitely are heading up a bit. Uh, and we, of course, are part of a larger region and part of uh, Missouri and Illinois, both states. And so we're seeing some increases there. So I'll just give you a few numbers, then I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Eccles. So um, number of positive COVID cases, and this was um, yesterday, we had 37 in the city. Day before was 51. Day before that was 53, 45, 58. So what you see here is that in the city of St. Louis, uh, on average, and this is a seven-day average, we're running 45, 46, 47 cases, uh, new cases a day. Now, with regard to hospitalizations, um, and these are regional numbers because they come from the four regional hospital systems, we... Um, and they also lag two days behind. So these numbers that you're getting today are numbers from Friday. 315 uh, people in the hospital on Friday that are confirmed COVID positive. Another 92 that are in the hospital that are suspected COVID positive for a total of 407. Now, we, this number has been going up in the recent 10 days or so. We have had 400 people in the hospital before, and early on in this pandemic, we had as many as 700 people in the hospital at any one time. But still, 407 is an increase. 82 people on Friday were in the ICU. Again, a bit of an uptick from where we had been. 43 people on ventilators, and these are confirmed COVID positive people. And uh, New patients admitted to the hospital on Friday were 42, but the seven-day rolling average on the number of, of admissions to regional hospitals was 46 on Friday. That's the highest uh, seven-day average that we have had. So it's, it's being driven up by a day about five days ago when we had 64 people admitted to the hospital and then on uh, th last Thursday it looks like we had 55. So that's driving that seven day average up. Um, of course all of the hospital numbers include surrounding counties and uh, we know that many of the surrounding counties have, um, have been having a, a, a much higher increase in the number of cases over the last few weeks and of course that means those folks end up in in the hospital. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. And and I know you want to hear from Dr. Eccles. So I'm going to step aside, turn this over to Dr. Eccles, and um, I'll be back with you for questions. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Eccles. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, good morning or good afternoon, uh, St. Louis. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to uh, Live with LIDA. Uh, as the mayor mentioned, the city of St. Louis, along with uh, surrounding jurisdictions, are experiencing, is experiencing uh, an increase in the number of COVID-19 cases. Uh, in the city, as the mayor mentioned as well, um, we've experienced a little over 20% increase in the average of new cases that are being reported daily. Uh, the mayor mentioned that there are roughly 45, 45 to 47 cases being reported. Uh, on average uh, over a period of seven days. Um, prior to that, 
um, the average was around 35 cases per day, which, is, which equates to a 22% increase in the seven-day average for COVID-19 cases that are being reported. When we look at the, the demographics of the cases that are being reported in the city of St. Louis, uh, we're still seeing the, the uh, individuals um, between the age of 20 to 29 accounting for um, the highest percentage of cases that are being reported. So, you know, the health department is still working with our media outlets as well as our, with our stakeholders, uh, which includes community-based organizations, academic institutions, et cetera, uh, to make sure individuals are know, aware of the importance of um, uh, adhering to the prevention guidelines that have been issued by the city of St. Louis. And those, gu those guidelines, which haven't changed significantly, uh, still include wearing a face covering if you're out in public, uh, maintaining phys physical distance, uh, which means uh, staying at least six feet apart away from those who uh, do not reside in your immediate household, uh, as well as staying home if you're ill. And those simple measures are really important uh, to slowing the spread of COVID-19. Uh, along with that, those uh, requirements as well is uh, hand washing or hand hygiene um, requirements, meaning that you know individuals should wash their hands regularly with soap and water and use hand sanitizer uh, when soap and water are not available. Um, we're also paying really close attention to, um, as the mayor mentioned, the uh, what's happening in our hospitals, um, because the hospitals in the city of St. Louis uh, serve as a safety net for not only the city of St. Louis, but for the region and some of outstate Missouri. And so we have to do a good job of maintain, making sure that we protect our hospital systems as well as um, our public health systems. Uh, we're also aware that school systems are resuming uh, in-person uh, learning, and so we're really paying close attention to what's happening among school-age youth. So the city of St. Louis, um, when we looked at, looked at our data today, um, the school-age youth account for uh, less than 8% of the total number of uh, COVID-19 cases that have been reported. However, there is potential for that number to increase as schools resume in-person learning. So the City of St. Louis Department of Health is working really closely with all school systems in the City of St. Louis to make sure uh, that they have sound infection control protocols in place. Uh, and then we also, we're making sure that they, if they have any questions, we're making ourselves available to them to navigate them through any um, unusual circumstances that may arise um, as they resume in-person learning. Um, we're also looking at what's happening up across the nation, um, uh, across the region, uh, locally. Um, because we have a very mobile community. Um, the mayor mentioned this as well. So in surrounding jurisdictions, there are, they're experiencing um, higher number or a higher number of cases, uh, COVID-19 cases that are being reported. Uh, so we have to be extremely mindful of, uh, of what's happening in neighboring jurisdictions because uh, their residents tend to be very mobile as our uh, city of St. Louis residents. And so as we move across jurisdictions, it's really important for us to understand the risk that may be associated with going to other jurisdictions. Um, uh, during this very uh, uh, unprecedented time. Um, so we ask, the health department asks that everyone continue to implement um, the, uh, the requirements that we talk about every day. So again, uh, wearing a face covering if you're out in public, um, also making sure you maintain at least six feet of distance between yourself and those who don't live with you, um, washing your hands with soap and water and using hand, height, uh, hand sanitizer when soap and water are not available. Uh, as well as staying home if you're ill. We know that that may be extremely difficult for some, but as best you can, please stay home um, if you're ill, uh, because we're also seeing an increase in the number of workplace-related exposures uh, across the city of St. Louis. So please make sure, you know, if you're feeling ill, um, work with, the, uh, notify your supervisor, your employer, um, and if you if you have the if you can, please stay home. Uh, that helps protect your workforce. Uh, when work when people in your workforce are impacted, that can significantly um, reduce the, um, the organization's ability to actually function. Uh, so um, again, it's really about looking, at, looking out for the best interest of the community at large. Uh, so something as simple as staying home if you're ill um, can really help uh, protect the, the health and well-being of others around you. Can we take some questions, doctor? Sure. Uh, Bonnie is watching and wanted to know, what is the city of St. Louis's uh, current r not number? Bunny, that's a great question. I didn't look at that before I came over, but I do know that it's... Um, you might be able to get it. That's what this looks like. There should be one for all age groups. So right now, the, the R-naught for the city of St. Louis is right around one. 
Uh, we've been around one for uh, the last few weeks, and being having R not around one means that we don't we aren't having an exponential increase uh, in COVID-19 cases. However, um, that can change. This is a very fluid situation. You know, if we have a spike in cases, that R not can actually increase uh, to greater than one. And so we um, that's why we really encourage everyone to adhere to the preventive 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 measures uh, that we talk about day in and day out to. Um, uh, to make sure we don't have uh, increasing our R not, which is an indication of community transmission. Uh, Yuri is watching. Dr. Eccles has a question related to testing and what are the best places in the city of St. Louis to get a test, including uh, the availability of rapid testing? Um, so the city of St. Louis, we have uh, partnered with the federally qualified health centers across the city, uh, which include Affinia Healthcare, Care STL Health, um, and Betty Jean Kerr People's uh, Health Centers to um, offer COVID-19 testing at no cost to residents. Um, they continue to do so, so um, you can go to their website uh, to look to um, find information about their testing locations, um, as well as uh, any special COVID-19 testing events they may be hosting over the upcoming week. Uh, rapid tests are limited. Um, however, one of the federally qualified health centers is providing rapid tests, and that is Affinia Healthcare. Um, but that's only for uh, under special circumstances. Um, and so if there's a special circumstance that, that you have, it'll be important to uh, communicate that to um, the individuals that are conducting the test um, when you go to get tested. Two last questions, doctor. You talked about the age demographics of 20 to 40 driving the increase. That's a shift from the beginning of the pandemic. What is your message to that, those age groups, the younger folks in the city to take COVID-19 seriously and take precautions? I think, you know, I was, I was 20 at one point in my lifetime, and so I understand, you know, there's a sense of invisibility um, that individuals may have. But we have to be mindful of the impact of spreading COVID, uh, not only to our family members, but other members in the community. We have other people who may have underlying medical conditions that place them at greater risk for uh, severe complications. So it's really important that everyone be mindful of uh, the consequence um, or the unintended consequence of uh, spreading COVID uh, to, to others. And that can, look, that can result in uh, increased deaths in the city of St. Louis, uh, increased hospitalizations, and we really have to do our best to, again, preserve um, our uh, hospital systems and our public health systems. And so don't, don't think about COVID-19 as something that only impacts you. It can impacts the entire community. And so please, when you think about whether or not you want to wear your face covering, think about those other people around you who may be depending on you to do the best thing to, to, um, to protect their health. Last question we got, Dr. Eccles, is the increase in the city tied to a specific place, event, or reoccurring event, or is it uh, being spread just as community transmission? That's another great question. Um, so early on in the pandemic, what we were seeing was uh, a lot that a lot of our cases were associated with congregate living facilities, such as uh, long-term care facilities, independent living facilities. Um, and so over time, we've really worked uh, diligently with them to make sure they have infectious control protocols as well as resources to protect their staff and their residents. And now what we're seeing is more community-wide transmission. Uh, we did um, uh, roughly in September when we were getting uh, case doing our disease investigations, we were finding that there was a lot of exposures occurring in um, venues such as bars, nightclubs, uh, et cetera. And so that led, led us to implement some additional mitigation strategies but right now we're really seeing that it's spread community-wide. But when we look at the hot spots, um, there are a couple of zip codes that account for um, the majority of cases, and so that's 63116, uh, 63109, as well as a few other uh, zip codes are being impacted more than other zip codes in the city of St. Louis. And so we've doing, we're doing um, a lot of work to get information to residents in those zip codes so they'll know um, to, you know, protect, to protect themselves, um, as well as uh, remind them of the consequences that can uh, come from not protecting yourself and exposing others to COVID-19. Okay, last question. We did get a question about, uh, you mentioned schools are going back. Uh, today for SLPS, parents have the option to send kids K through second back if they wanted. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to what uh, plans are in place for keeping students and teachers safe who are returning? 
So that was a, ma a major priority for the health department. So um, early this summer, when schools were, school systems were planning to, um, uh, whether or not they were gonna resume in-person learning uh, during the fall semester, we made a requirement that every school in the city of St. Louis have an infection control plan in place. Uh, these plans um, outline protocols for reporting uh, situations where an individual may be suspected to have COVID-19, someone may develop symptoms, um, we also uh, made it uh, included information about other communicable diseases that impact the health of uh, students and staff. And so the, every school in the city of St. Louis at this point in time has an infection control plan in place. And so we're really trying to get them to change their focus from just COVID-19 to really focus on infection control, uh, which is necessary to uh, slow and prevent the spread of COVID-19 um, in academic institutions. Uh, we're working with all school systems, including the tertiary academic institutions, such as Washington University and St. Louis University, to make sure um, that cases are investigated in a timely manner, as well as uh, individuals who may be uh, identified as close contacts to someone who tests positive, want to make sure that they get quarantined uh, in a timely manner as well. And so it really requires the entire community to come together to um, slow the spread of COVID-19. You know, all those, uh, the primary and secondary schools are uh, re resuming in-person learning. The parents play a critical role in making sure their students or their children understand the importance of these preventive measures. We have received some reports from um, uh, primary and secondary schools that uh, uh, some parents don't, haven't bought into uh, the preventive measures. So we really need parents to understand that these measures are necessary to protect the health of not only the staff at the schools, but also their, their children while they're there for in-person learning. Uh, and so again, make sure that um, for parents out there, please make sure that you educate and inform your child about um, infection control measures, uh, wearing a face, the importance of wearing a face covering, um, how to wear properly wear a face covering, uh, the importance of proper hand hygiene, washing the hands with soap and water regularly, um, as well as main, maintaining that six feet of distance from other people, uh, so that they can slow the spread and reduce their risk of actually becoming infected with COVID-19. That's it for questions, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you all. I'm, I'm glad you uh, got to have your questions answered directly from, from Dr. Eccles. He's the expert here. So, any questions for, for me? <laughs> yeah, I'm still have questions for me. Uh, is there still a limit on personal gatherings in the city? This is from Shelley. Personal gatherings in the city uh, for outdoor events that would not require a mask. So that's a complicated question. There's not a limit on outdoor gatherings per se. If you are, let me back up and say that if you're in a group outdoors, you need to be wearing a mask. So there, there's no group uh, activity where uh, you're gonna be within six feet of someone that where you are exempt from wearing a mask. Gotta wear it. Um, what was the other part of that question? Got to wear a mask if you're outdoors. Oh, your question was, is there a limit? No, but there is a recommendation that you keep your pod small, keep your group small, because the bigger your group is, if you're not socially distanced, the higher risk you're at. Uh, Jill wrote in about how other countries are starting to talk about stay-at-home orders, starting to talk about crackdowns again. Is the city of St. Louis, are we headed in that direction? So we're watching these numbers very, very, very carefully. Uh, if, if the people of the city of St. Louis will continue to wear their masks and if they'll wear them more than ever, and if we can get 95% of the people wearing a mask, practicing social distancing and hand washing or hand sanitizer, if we can do that, we can avoid further um, restrictions. And that's certainly what we want to do. We already have those mandates in place along with bars and restaurants closing at 11 um, p.m. And uh, so we just, we have to do these things. If we don't, if we can't do something as, I'll call it minor, as minor as wearing a mask, and I picked up my fire department mask when I sat down, uh, but if we can't do something as minor as wearing a mask, it's going to be very difficult for us to get compliance on even more restrictions. So 
please wear your mask. Stay six feet apart. So the age-old question of 11 p.m. closing for bars and restaurants. We mm -hmm. have more questions submitted on both sides. A few people saying it's killing business, but some very thankful uh, for that measure. Is there an update on when that will change? Uh, there's not an update on when that will change, and I, I, I'm sorry that there's not an update, but when we see these numbers increasing in our area and in our region and our hospital numbers increasing, um, it just doesn't allow us to, to, lift, to lift that requirement. Danielle wrote in about flu season and COVID season headed into winter and wanted to know what the city's plan is for taking care of uh, unhoused individuals in these really cold months. So, um, Jeanette, is it Jeanette? D Danielle. Danielle, I'm sorry, Danielle. Where did I get that? Um, so, Danielle, we work to try to keep to house homeless people 24 7, 365 days a year, not just when it's cold. Um, and we try to persuade people to come in and to come into shelter every day. Uh, we have, of course, um, more uh, ability to get people to come into shelter when it is colder. And like today, it's, it's kind of a nasty, rainy day out there today. And I hope that we are able to get more people to come into shelter. There are shelter beds available. Um, and we, there will be more available over the winter. Missy wrote in uh, with concerns about vi numerous businesses that have not been requiring people to wear masks in cases employees have been wearing masks. Who in the city does someone contact to report violations of COVID-19 orders? Missy, <clears throat> if there are numerous businesses where their employees are not wearing masks and the customers are not wearing masks, uh, you really have to report that to the health department. There are two or three ways that you can do that. Number one, you can call the Citizen Service Bureau, 622-4800. That's 314-622-4800. Secondly, you can also, if you're uh, on Twitter, you can tweet at, um, at the CSB, and you can post pictures. You give uh, the best address that you can and the name of the business, uh, and that is at STLCSB at STLCSB on Twitter, and you can also report it online. Just go on the city's website, um, click on make a complaint, I think it is. It's right there virtually on the home page. You'll be able to upload pictures. You'll be able to give a description of, of what your complaint is. The health department will follow up. They will call those businesses. Uh, in many cases, they will make a visit to the business um, to see for themselves. And while we don't want to close any business down, if we, if we have to, we, we will, because we do need the compliance. A few last questions uh, on other topics, Mayor. Okay. Uh, related to rental and mortgage. We hear mm -hmm. a lot from people who need help, but Essence is a landlord and hasn't been able to get paid in seven months. Are there any programs that you know of or assistance for property owners who are also struggling? Essence, the mortgage and rental assistance is paid directly to the property owner. So it's paid to the landlord. So if you have tenants that are not paying their rent because uh, they lost their job or their hours were reduced, be sure that those tenants have applied for rental and mortgage assistance. Uh, because when they submit the right paperwork and you submit the right paperwork, uh, then that that money, that rental money, will be paid directly to you. So uh, it's it's important for you to work with your uh, with your tenants on that as well. Justin is a downtown resident uh, mm -hmm. who would like to see Washington Avenue open all the time. Do we have any update on uh, the lane restrictions and street closures for the downtown? Uh, they are still in place at this time. Um, we are trying to strike a good balance here. As you all know, that we, or many of you know, we opened the Eads Bridge. That was two weeks ago, I think it was, um, all the time. A few of the lane restrictions have been uh, reduced. On Washington Avenue, uh, we are now only closing Washington Avenue in the evenings, uh, on the weekend evenings, I think from 5 o'clock uh, on, and then reopening the next morning. So they're, they're still in place. Um, I think, you know, we're 
uh, happy to hear from Washington Avenue business and or residents. And uh, we're trying to strike the right balance here to uh, keep the reckless driving, uh, people doing donuts, squealing their tires, and the behavior trying to keep that down. It, you know, sometimes and often as the weather gets colder, some of that subsides as well. Uh, but we're trying to strike the right balance here. So we're happy to hear from you if you have a point of view on that. We had a few folks write in about Clean Sweep from over the weekend asking. Okay. How does somebody get one or encourage the organizations involved to bring it to their neighborhood? Hmm. So Clean Sweep for this year, this was our last one and it was a big one. Uh, but for next year, certainly uh, this year we cleaned uh, uh, Martin Luther King from Friendly Temple to Kings Highway where the new Urban League. We also took down, there's a few buildings left to be taken down. They didn't get them all done on Saturday. Uh, but there are 14 buildings on the list to be taken down. I think all but about five or six of them were taken down. Uh, and so how do you get on the on that list? I think um, contacting the Urban League might be uh, might be the best best way to do that. Now, if you have a building that you think needs to be brought down and it's a city owned building, uh, certainly contact uh, contact us through Citizen Service Bureau. 6224800 at STLCSB on Twitter, uh, and we'll look to see if it's on a demo list. Uh, and the last question, also related to Clean Sweep, but mainly just about dilapidated buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, when those buildings come down at Clean Sweep, are the owners charged for the work, and how does the city keep absentee owners accountable? That's two different questions. Uh, how do we keep absentee owners accountable? I assume this is a vacant building. Uh, that building should be on our vacant building list, which fines the absentee owner. I think it's $200 every six months in addition to their property taxes. That's not a lot, but it is something. Uh, that building should also be cited for the exterior building code violations, and usually there are many on a vacant building. Um, so those are two things. Is the When the buildings are taken down by clean sweep, the, all of that labor all of that equipment has been donated by the uh, companies, the construction companies who are doing clean sweep, and that's S.M. Wilson and McCarthy and Alberici and Fred Weber and Keeley, and I don't have the list here, but there are about a dozen companies that, that do that. So for the most part, most of the buildings taken down during clean sweep are buildings that are owned by LRA. Not all of them, but, but most of them are. So. That's it, Mayor. It's 2.30. That's it. Thank you all. Appreciate you being with us this afternoon. Uh, stay warm, stay dry, and we'll be back in touch with you in a couple of days. Thanks. Bye-bye.